Hi, so I'm going to give a bit of an update, an overview of the process and then um, what you can actually do with the graphene oxide once you've got it. Now in terms of updating, um, I'm getting reports back of people having difficulty uh, repeating this experiment and so I've repeated it a couple of times. Now the first time I repeated it, um, I failed to make it as well. What I did was um, I did it in the back garden and left it outside and because we're in the middle of winter here the temperature stayed around about zero or one degree, something like that, and it failed to work. The set time, second time I did it, I um, did it inside and I put it on the radiator and our radiators are about 40 degrees and it worked just gym dandy. So it's quite sensitive to temperature. Now remember, if you're going to play around with temperature, you really must keep it below 55 degrees because at over 55 degrees, then um, the um, potassium permanganate forms a manganese pentoxide compound and, and that's explosive. So you've really got to keep it down to the, sort of the 50 and below region if you're going to play with the temperature. Now, if you do it and it isn't working, to be honest, the chances are you've made a mistake. So you need to go back to the beginning, keep a note of what you're doing and proceed through the process. That way, if it doesn't work, look back at your notes, see what you've done and change a variable, something like temperature. Um, there's a, quite a wide range of uh, components you can use in this uh, experiment and if it's not working for you, try adding a bit more uh, potassium permanganate as an oxidising agent and um, see if that works for you. But the process itself works just gym dandy as long as you do it um, in a stepwise manner and logically. Now, as I say, I repeated it and, and got good results. I've also been getting some um, feedback that the washing process hasn't been properly explained, and that's reasonable. Um, what I mean by the washing is that when you've um, finished your reaction, so you've um, come to the end of the time period, you've added your hydrogen peroxide and the thing's gone yellow, then what you do is you, you get a big old bucket, mine's seven litres, and you fill it full of seven litres of warm water. And you literally pour that into that bucket of seven litres of warm water, swirl your glass around a bit and pour it in and then leave it for a day. Well, you stir it up and then leave it for a day. At the end of the day, what will have happened is that your um, graphene oxide will have sunk to the bottom and it'll be a kind of a sludgy brown jelly-like layer at the bottom of your bucket. And the most of the bucket will be full of just clean water. And you pour off the clean water and it pours off quite easily. You just Hold it, pour it, the water will pour off and leave your brown sludge sitting at the bottom. You pour it off until most of the water is gone. Then you add your hydrochloric acid, and remember it's one molar hydrochloric acid. And you add a litre of that, you just pour it into the sludge you've got, stir it around, and again leave it for a day. Again the same thing will happen. The brown sludge will sink to the bottom, the top you'll have a clear solution, as your acidic solution, and pour it off. Then add more water, another four or five litres, stir it, leave it. Once it's settled to your brown and your clear, pour off the clear. And that is the washing process. So you just keep on doing that, and the pH reads about 4 or 5, something like that. And at the end of that process, what you'll get is um, this. This is what you've got. So there's your brown sludge at the bottom there, and that's your graphene oxide. And this off-coloured sort of um, dirty water is the stuff that you've been pouring off. Um, I've left it like this because I don't mind that. And um, that stuff is what I'm going to mix into. Um, that's a, a pH of about 5, I think. Um, once it's at this stage, what you need to do is to put it into the sonicator. Now, my sonicator is a jeweler's sonicator. It's about 700 watts. And it's meant for things like um, cleaning CDs, cleaning rings, cleaning glasses. So it's not amazingly powerful. And um, it only does 8 minutes at a time. So I have to do a full run. Once it's done, I do it again, I do it again, and I do it five times, it gives me about half an hour. And at the end of that half an hour, what I get is this, which is my dispersion of graphene oxide, and, and it's kind of a, quite a dark brown colour, but that's my graphene oxide dispersed. Now, <coughs> we now have a problem of what to do with it, so we can get that into a usable form, something that we can actually work with to make batteries or supercapacitors or touchscreens. Um, and there is a method that... Uh, has been used out there called the light scribe method where you take your go solution and you paint it onto a piece of plastic then you put that plastic onto a light scribe disc pop it into a light scribe drive 
run it six or seven times and you get your reduced graphene oxide which you can then use to make supercapacitors. Uh, again I've been getting reports that this is um, not working for some people and um, I decided to have a look at that and to see what, what could be done about it. And there is um, a method out there to uh, reduce the graphene oxide using a, a, a standard oven. Um, the way that you work with these things uh, has an intimate effect on what you want to use them for. So if you want to use graphene oxide as a supercapacitor, super you need to make sure that it has certain properties. Uh, and in inverted commas, those properties are that it's fluffy, um, that it kind of forms a cup shape, uh, and there are lots of little pores at the edges of the cup. And the light scribe method is really good at doing that because it puffs it up like that. So you get a large surface area and you get pores that you can get ionic conduction on. Uh, if you want the thing to be a touch screen, what you need is a nice flat sheet. So that actually the light scribe method isn't, and it isn't good for that. You need a different kind of method. Now, the method that I'm proposing here was uh, part of a research paper and the guy um, did different temperatures. He did 200, 250, uh, 300, 350, 400 and he annealed the graphene oxide at these temperatures and at the different temperatures the graphene oxide had different properties, that is it was cussed up or it was a flat sheet. Now the perfect temperature um, for supercapacitors according to him was um, 200 degrees. Brilliant. 200 degrees centigrade is exactly what we can reach in our um, home ovens. So what I did was um, take three materials and the first one I took was a bit of aluminium. And I put the graphene oxide onto the aluminium until it formed this, and let it dry, and it formed this nice golden brown that you can see. And this golden brown was formed on the aluminium and I did it on glass and I did it on paper. And I got the same golden brown coat on each of them. And then I just left that to dry in the sun, and it, it took about two or three hours to dry in the sun until it gave that golden brown colour. Um, when you put graphene oxide onto paper, so a normal piece of Xerox paper is what I used, then it will cockle. When, when you put the water on, it forms little cups and little cockles, and everything sinks into the bottom of the cockles and makes a right mess. So what you do first is soak the paper, put it onto a board and smooth it out with your hands, and then paint your graphene oxide onto it and then put it in the oven for one hour at 200 degrees centigrade and this is what you get. You get a piece of paper and you see that the paper is actually quite brown because of the effect of the heat and it's quite crinkly and you get your reduced graphene oxide here which is this nice black square and that's actually quite conductive um, that's about uh, 15 to 20 ohms per centimetre so it's a pretty conductive bit of paper there and the back of it is just browned up because of the heat of the oven, but there's a, a nice piece of reduced graphene oxide. Now I did a square, and the original one I was thinking about was to do the paper on the light scribe device, so um, there's one there that I did on the light scribe, and as you can see the um, paper has, hasn't suffered nearly as much, and we've got a nice graphene coating on the top there, uh, and you can see that it's black and shiny as the graphene's moved in the light. You see it's catching that nice metallic shine, telling you it's not carbon, it's actually graphene. Okay, so the first thing we did was on paper, uh, and we got those results. The next thing we did was on aluminium, and I uh, showed you the aluminium, and again, um, with the aluminium, the graphene doesn't stay very well to the aluminium, it actually just um, lays on top, it doesn't adhere very tightly. So um, if you put a bit of plastic on there, a bit of sticky plastic, it'll lift the graphene off. The other one that I was quite interested in, was um, this one. Now um, you should be able to see that that's catching the light and being quite shiny. So we've got that metallic finish on it. But if I hold it up, you should be able to see straight the way through it. So we've got a graphene coating on glass. Now what I did with that was um, take the graphene oxide and pour it on the top and just let it run down, give it a shake. And so the graphene coating on that is actually quite thick. Again, it's conductive. It's actually about 150 ohms per centimetre on this one. Um, but we have a conductive coating to our glass of a relatively thick um, graphene sheet. There's plenty of problems with it, incidentally. Um, I didn't prepare the glass in any way, so there are tiny little spots where the graphene didn't actually get. There are some bits which are thicker than there are other bits. Um, so I didn't actually do a very good job of that. It was more a proof of concept than anything else. 
So the next thing to do with the, the glass coated graphene is obviously to um, play around with the concentrations and the thickness of the film. So for instance, instead of just pouring it on there and giving it a shake, what I could do is dip coat it, so you just dip it in and lift it out, let it drip dry. Or I could spin coat it, where you spin it around quite quickly, put a drop in the th uh, on the top of it while it's spinning and the centrifugal force will force the graphene out as a thin film. Um, so I would like to play around with that a little bit to try and get a, a better coating. Um, but there you go, there are the ways to use the graphene oxide that we've actually made. So you can coat paper, you can coat aluminium, you can coat glass, you can coat anything that you can heat it up to 200 degrees. If you want to coat plastic, you're going to have to go through an intermediate substrate. So aluminium is quite good. So you coat the aluminium, um, put that in the oven at 200 degrees for an hour, put some plastic on, and then iron your plastic so the plastic melts a little bit, and it'll pick up the graphene from the aluminium. Then you peel it off, and what you'll have is a plastic-coated um, graphene sheet. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, my next plan is, as I say, to play around with this a little bit. Um, this I like because this could be used for um, touchscreens and um, solar cells. So that's what I'm going to be playing around with a little bit for that. So thank you very much. I hope that helps.